I did it! Yes, I did it! I have officially popped my Paranormal Activity Cherry. Hey guys, David here, and welcome to my first review of 2014, and my first movie review at that. And I'm going to go ahead and review Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. And this marks my first Paranormal Activity movie that I've ever seen. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. I am no longer a Paranormal Activity virgin. And, wow, this is some way to... to invest in the franchise, I guess. And the reason why it's called Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is because this is some form of spin-off to the official Paranormal Activity franchise. Five is coming. In fact, I believe five is coming this October, but right in the middle of that, they're going to go ahead and release Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, in January. Ugh. So because of the release date, I was expecting the worst, and I've heard some people say that this is just terrible. But then I started hearing other people say that it's actually the best of the franchise, and so... I went in not knowing which side I was going to fall in, and it turns out I'm actually in the middle. I'm in neither side. But before I get to that, let's go ahead and talk about what this movie is about. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, has Jesse, a high school graduate. Huh, high school graduate. This guy looks 22, and so does his friends. But let's go ahead and dismiss that for a second and just look at him as a high school graduate, all casting issues aside. And has him just fooling around, fooling around with his friends. You know, he just graduated high school, so he's enjoying the time of his life for the time being before this thing called life starts to kick his ass. And one night, the really creepy woman that lives under him, under his apartment complex, dies all of a sudden. And he decides to take the camera that his friend has been recording everything up, up until this point and decides to go down there and investigate. And I think this is the movie or the filmmaker's way of saying that, you know, it's not just white people that make the stupid mistake to go down and investigate the creepy shit. You know, Mexicans do it too. I wouldn't be surprised if Paranormal Activity 5 has, like, black people investigating stuff to say, like, see? See? It's not just us doing this shit. But after going down there and investigating everything, creepy stuff starts to happen and certain paranormal things start to surround Jesse. Now, I said that this movie's a spin-off. And quite frankly, it does a really good job at separating itself from the other Paranormal Activity movies. Now, I said that I have not seen in their entirety the other Paranormal Activity movies and this is my first one in its entirety. But I don't feel like I need to watch those movies to know their tone based on the trailers and based on what people have told me about those movies. You know, I can't say that, oh, I like them or dislike them or what I thought about their stories because, like I said, I haven't seen them. But based on the tone that they're giving off from the marketing material and, like I said, the, the word of mouth that I've gotten from my friends, I can tell that those movies were based on these people that want to do nothing but just investigate and not knowing better, not knowing when to just stop and just run. Whereas the, this movie decides to take place in a different location, takes place in Los Angeles, more than likely East LA because of some of the people and some of the things that you see in this movie. So because it takes place in a different setting, it shows different kind of characters. And because it shows different kind of characters, it really has a different sort of feel than the other movies do. Now when I say feel, I don't mean in terms of the trappings and in terms of the, the, the writing that this movie tries to use in order to get you to be scared. But let's say, let's say for example, the characters that you start off with, the first half an hour of this movie, it's a bit of a comedy, alright? It's just non-stop jokes, but it's not jokes where they set up the, the scene just for the sake of having a joke. No, these characters feel real. Like, the, the, the things that they say to each other, you're like, yeah, you know, it's, it's comedic, but it doesn't feel, you know, unnatural. It feels like people talking to one another and things that they would say. And right off the bat, you got likable characters. Yeah, they're a little, I don't want to say idiotic, but not the most perfect specimen of characters you would have in a horror movie, but they feel real, they feel grounded, and they're are, they are likable. Something that horror movies tend to not have, which is likable characters, because when you're making a horror movie, you got to make your characters likable. Because when bad stuff starts to happen, you want to care for them, because the only way that you're going to feel scared 
is to feel scared for a character and feel like, oh my god, they're about to die. No, don't die, please. I really like you. And you want to have that. And I actually felt that with these characters, especially when the shit started to hit the fan. It's about 30 or 45 minutes in when they, they decide to investigate not only the apartment in which this old lady used to live, but also what do all these things mean. And that's when the movie starts to fall that typical, that typical template of horror movies these days. Not just found footage movies, but horror movies. And not only do the characters do things that we've seen other characters do before that we really wish, because, you know, they're likable characters, but you're, you're just like, man, I wish you wouldn't have done that because then you could have just saved yourself a whole lot of trouble, but then you wouldn't have a movie. So they kind of have to do that. And not only does it fall on similar trappings as other horror movies, not only, not just found footage movies, but on top of that, you got trappings from the found footage genre that I'm just getting so sick of. And of course, the number one culprit would be the person who's holding the camera, not dropping the camera when they have to. Like, there's, like, there's so many issues with that camera. I couldn't even keep count. Numerous moments where I'm like, do you really need to take the camera there? Like, do you really need to go there to ta and take the camera with you? No. Any normal person would not have a camera there. But they do. And for the sake of the movie, it just has to be there. And along with those trappings with the found footage approach to this movie, as well as all the paranormal activity movies and almost any kind of horror movie in this generation, there's also some other horror tropes that I, I'm just getting real tired of. The typical jump scare, the you can almost telegraph every single moment when, you know, the camera's gonna move away and then when it moves back a certain something is gone and you're like, turn around, look up, boom, there it is. And I'm like, I not once was I scared. Not once did I jump out of my seat. I'm not gonna lie, there was I think one jump scare halfway through. I can't remember what it was. I'm trying really hard to remember what it was, but there was one, just one that made my heart jump just a little bit. Like when you miss a step going up the stairs and you manage to catch it, like you don't miss it completely, but you catch like the end of it and your heart does that little choo -choo, like, and they're like, whoa, that's all it got out of me. All right, I didn't even move. Like my body was just completely still. And just all of the other jump scares did almost nothing to me. And apart from the jump scares, you also got other little things from the horror genre that I'm getting sick of. I'm getting tired of people pulling things out of their bodies that almost aren't making any sense anymore. I mean, you see this in the trailer. He's pulling out like a piece of string out of his eye. Why the string? What kind of relation does the string have to do with this demon or whatever? I mean, what? I really wish that some of these things would make, se make sense rather than to go for that shock value. And almost the entire second act and part of the third act is nothing but this. And I felt like that was the biggest letdown of the movie. Now, the second act is not necessarily as generic as I'm making it sound. When the demon latches onto Jesse, our protagonist, it's actually pretty cool what he does. He's It's practically like he gains superpowers. He's beating up cholos. He's doing all these anti-gravity moves. It reminded me an awful lot of Chronicle, and I'm pretty sure that there's several other people that are comparing that, that particular segment in the movie to, and that is Chronicle, which is another found footage movie in which teenagers gain superhuman abilities by interacting with this, you know, this relic or this artifact that they come into contact with which was one of my favorite movies of 2012. And it did remind me of that movie. It made me want to watch that movie again. But I did think that that little part in the movie where he's doing all these crazy things because of the supernatural abil abilities that he's gained through the possession, if you will, was pretty cool to see. And like I said, because this character is so likable, you kind of go along with him. You're like, yeah, that's, that's cool. It's just like his friend is like, hey, this is awesome. But then the demon has to remind you that, yeah, you're not watching Chronicle 2, you're watching a Paranormal Activity movie, so things are going to get gnarly. Unfortunately, I think that the transition from this looking cool to things going crazy and super freaky is a little iffy because that middle part where it tries to transform into that, I was getting some flashbacks to Spider-Man 3, let's just say that, because this demon has to show that he's having an influence on Jesse, so what does Jesse start to do? He starts to dress in black, and there was a moment where I think he was slicking his hair back or something, and he's telling his friends that you're not my friend anymore. He didn't actually do that, but it did remind me of Spider-Man 3. It isn't until something gets introduced into 
this movie that not only you know about tw like I said 20 minutes before the movie ends that not only have you probably never seen it in a paranormal activity movie but you've probably never seen it in a horror movie period it's just something that you're like finally finally something someone does this and not only is it cool to see this happen in a horror movie because it feels so refreshing to finally see this but it makes sense because at first I thought to myself like wow this is so over the top that I'm hoping that they do something well with this but as I thought about it I'm like well it makes sense and I give credit to the writers for deciding to go with this because it, it was an opportunity and they took it and this is where the movie got kind of funny again but this time it was kind of unintentionally funny during those first 30 minutes they were doing things that were intentionally funny and did get a laugh at me here I was laughing at something that was unintentionally unintentionally funny but I wasn't necessarily laughing at it I wasn't laughing like wow this is just so stupid no because like I said it makes sense so I was laughing in the in, in the vein of wow this is something that I've just never seen before and because of that I'm laughing and I'm having a good time and then right before the movie ends something happens that there's only gonna be three kind of people that will react that there's only gonna be three kind of reactions to this ending you're gonna love it you're gonna hate it or you're gonna love the introduction to it or hate the conclusion to it or the execution and I'm the third the third one in which right when it happened I'm like this is very interesting this is rather intriguing but as it went along and then it concluded and then the credits started rolling I thought to myself really that's all you're gonna do which is practically nothing because it really did nothing to the paranormal activity universe without spoiling anything let's just say that and maybe this might be a bit of a spoiler especially if you've seen this prior horror movie annual horror movie franchise but I'm just gonna say that this ending reminded me an awful lot of Saw 4. If you've seen the Saw movies and you've seen Saw 4 and you get the gist of that movie, you probably know what I'm talking about. So this being the first of the Paranormal Activity movies that I've seen, I think this is a nice way to start. Kinda. Because like I said, the first 30 minutes it introduces us to some really likable characters that when things start to happen, I care. And even though it gets incredibly generic during that second act, the third act managed to redeem it introducing something that we've just I've just have not seen in a long long time with not only this kind of genre of a horror movie but just a horror movie period so before I score this movie I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know that from now on I'm not gonna score movies like I used to I'm eliminating the letter grade because I just think it's a bit of a hassle to put in two grades that mean the exact same thing it's a it's a bit of an editing hassle and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of decimals because I think that'll make things a lot more interesting by the end of the year because right now I'm trying to compile my top 10 movies of 2013 and I'm not having that much fun with it because it's not that bit of a challenge because all I have to do is go back and look at all the movies that I gave mid to high nines and then boom I can just take those movies rank them and there's my top 10 it's not that fun so because of that I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate decimals from now on and there's just going to be one number that way all the nines that I score this year I can then put them into consideration and think of you know which one's going to end up in my top 10 and it'll just make things much more fun in no way shape or form am I saying that this movie is a nine movie I give Paranormal Activity the marked ones a seven out of ten I think that this is actually a decent movie and it was actually a rather fun time at the movie theater but I wouldn't necessarily see it again and I do think that if you have never seen the Paranormal, Paranormal Activity movies before, you might want to watch one. And that's it. That's practically all you need to do to prepare for the Mark ones. It's just watch one, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought of Paranormal Activity and the Mark ones. If you did see it, subscribe to my channel for more videos. And I'll see you guys next time. But before I sign off, I've got a special treat. I present to you guys, my friends, Helen and Rufus, who I saw the movie with, presenting their review and their opinions on Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. Behold! Helen, you wanna go first? I guess. <laughs> I don't know right. how to start this off. We just got, see look, this is like oh. meta, uh, this is meta. We just got out of a found footage movie and now we're doing like a found footage kind of ha, ha, thing. Ha, 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 ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> we just got out of Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, and I'm going to do a little mini review here with my friends.
First up is Hi. Helen. Hello. Well, although it was really funny, uh, it did have some <laughs> scary. Parts. It's a horror movie. It was really funny. Yeah. That's not good. It has some like suspenseful parts. Um, it was okay. You know, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I wouldn't pay to watch it again. Imagine if, imagine if we saw it the next day. It, That's 11 bucks. Yeah, I would have been mad if I spent 11 bucks on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth like six dollars. Yeah, especially whatever. that student discount. Yeah, alright. So what do you give it? I'll give it like a 6.5. 6 okay, that's yeah. fair. Rufus? Alright, well, the movie was pretty funny. <laughs> it, it was. It made me jump a, a, a couple times, but it was mostly funny. The characters were likable. I like the characters. And I give it a, I give it a seven. A seven? All right. You did very well. All right. So I don't know if I'm gonna tag this. On. Hey, come here. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna tag this onto my actual re review or not. I don't know if it's gonna stand by itself because, like I said, I wasn't planning on seeing this movie. You still got that thing here. Okay. I, whatever. Uh, but if I don't, I'm just gonna go ahead and re recap. And if I do, I don't care. I, I liked it. <laughs> The, uh, the I am no longer a paranormal. I'm no longer a paranormal activity, paranormal activity virgin, because this is my first uh, paranormal activity movie that I saw, especially in the theater. And yes, like what these two guys said, it was pretty funny. And the first half an hour was funny, but it was supposed to be funny, because you got all these people doing stupid sh uh, shit that's supposed to be funny. And it was uh, better than the rest. Yeah, and then there's moments that were funny, but weren't supposed to be funny, but it was still a fun time. Yeah. And like like you said, likable characters. Uh, I like the characters, so I cared what happened to them. Uh, was it was it scary? No. Hey. Okay. <laughs> uh, was it was it scary? No. Unfortunately, no. I could predict every every you know like right behind you. Boom. There he is. <laughs> so yeah, there was I think this one moment that made me do that little heart jump. Uh, like my body doesn't move, <laughs> but my little heart, but my my little heart. <laughs> <laughs> But my oh heart my. does a little like, like ah, mm. like, mm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that. But the, but there's some of my body feels that. <laughs> but I still liked it, and for the first paranormal activity movie that I saw, yeah, all right. I give it a seven out of ten too. Seven out of ten. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>